the previous uh, lectures we have seen some general principles on path programming what we are going to do now is apply those principles for actually developing the specific path program now what we are going to do in this lecture is program reasonably complex profiles for to be machined by the cnc machining centers and then we will follow that understand the differences between turning centers and machining centers and continue then with programming for the uh, complex uh, shapes on the cnc turning centers because both are important to us now in order to write a simple path program please refer to the unit 4 where the basics were already covered because we are going to apply all those things in the writing of this program now let's see how we can do it for a simple program let's look at this example 5.1 now if you notice here we have a a component wherein we have about uh, eight holes that are to be drilled each with a diameter of 10 mm so if we follow the principles that we have underlined in the previous one we have to prepare the process plan and then we will have to identify the axis system that are to be used now the process plan is there is only one operation that is drilling of eight holes therefore we need a twist drill which is having a diameter of 10 mm that is what all that is needed so when i want to write a path program i will have to use that information because the axis system that is selected for this because of the simplicity of the geometry is the lower left hand corner so the axis direction is already shown there in the x and y axis so when i want to write the program i will have to always specify some initial codes so the initial codes are say, like here the first thing to specify the units to be used since uh, my path drawing is given in metric i will say g71 and also uh, i want to use absolute programming so i give g90 then i will have to specify my initial set point so what i am going to do is bring my tool to the lower left hand corner of the path and the coordinates of that path is x0 y0 because that is my origin and i will keep the tool a little away from the top of the surface that's about 50 mm above so i will specify that as my set point so that is x0 y0 z50 so i will specify that by means of g92 then i don't know how what tool is present in the spindle so what i am interested in is using the tool number 1 so i will specify m06 that is to tool change and the tool that is required that is the t01 and then i will follow because i will have to rotate that uh, spindle start before i can do any machining operation so identify whatever is going to be my spindle speed so let us say i want uh, s1000 and specify that and say the tool has to, i mean the spindle has to rotate in the clockwise direction so i will specify s1000 m03 now please note that these are some of the steps that practically we will be using in all the programs to come so the, this is what i may like to call as start blocks and these start blocks will always be present in any of the program that we are going to use it now let us see the actual ones so now what i have to do is i have to do the drilling of the hole and i will have to find out the sequence in which i would like to do now for the purpose of drilling operation what i have to do is bring the tool to this point a little above that is generally we will take it as 2 mm above the first hole which we normally call it as the clearance plane and then from the current position wherever it is to that point i want to go rapid because since i am not cutting and the tool is moving in the air i don't want to waste any time so i will say give that as a rapid motion so i will specify g00 the coordinate of the first hole x20 y20 and then a 2 mm above the top of the hole and then from there i want to drill to the depth so i will specify because the tool is now going into the material so i need to specify g1 and then 
specify the depth. If you notice, it is Z minus 13 and the actual thickness is only 10 millimeters. So, why I gave minus 13? That is because the twist drill normally have a tool tip and when it will have to drill, it will have to cut through the bottom and it will have to have an over travel of at least 3 millimeters so that it will be able to completely machine a cylindrical hole. So, for that purpose, I have made the depth as Z minus 13 and on, I will since the cutting is taking place, I also have to specify my feed rate. So, feed rate is specified as 150 millimeters per minute. So, that is drill to depth and then once the drilling operation is completed, I want the tool to come back in the same location so that it will be clearing the material. So, I will say and since it is not cutting, I can come back in rapid. So, that rapid is specified by means of G0, Z2 that is rapid back to the clearance plane. So, that completes in fact, the block number 30, 35 and 40 uh, is the one hole drilling. Now, if you notice the block numbers, I did not give in consecutive numbers, but I gave in steps 30, 35, 40, 45. The reason for doing that is I may not be able to write the program correctly at the first instance. So, if I want to introduce one additional block in between, I can put let us say 31, 32, 33, 34. So, that numbers are available. That is the only reason why instead of giving uh, consecutive block numbers, I am giving uh, n steps of 5. So, one hole is completed. Next step is because we are the tool is above the surface. So, I can wrap it to the next hole. So, that is x60 y30 z2 and then I will continue the same drill to the depth wrap it back to the clearance plane and then uh, from there I will move to the next hole. So, I will repeat the same 3 drill to the depth wrap it back to the clearance plane then go to the hole 4 repeat the same steps go to the hole 5 repeat the same steps go to the hole 6 repeat repeat hole 8. So, that completes the machining of all the eight holes that are present. Once that is operation is completed, all the machining operation is completed. Now, good practice for the student or a programmer is always go back to the point where you have started. So, we will say x0, y0, z50 that is our start point please remember and we want to go rapid. Now, I did not specify g0 here because in the previous the code that was present is already Z0, therefore, I do not have to repeat that. So, I have said go to start point and then end of the program that is M02. Now, these are like the start blocks that we talked earlier, these are the end blocks. Always remember to make sure that these two blocks are always present at the end of your program. So, always take the tool back to the start point and you also have to stop the machine. So, that you will specify by means of M02. Suppose, if the spindle is running at this point of time or coolant is on, when you give M02, both will be off automatically. Now, if I run that program through a simulation program, I will talk about this simulation program slightly later, then I will see. So, that this will be proof that the program works. You remember, we started with this and then go all through all the eight holes that are to be machined. Normally, the simulation programs, two facilities will be available where you can see a three-dimensional solid view so that you can actually see a block and how the material is being removed or alternatively, we should also be able to see a view wherein you can see the just lines. Now, the convention that is used in these lines is if the tool movement is going through the material, it will be shown with a full line or a continuous line and when the tool is moving through air and it is not cutting, then it will be shown dotted line. So, all the motions that we have given are actually shown here. So, it, we have come up to this, then gone to the depth for the purpose of drilling, then come back, retract to the start point, 
so that we complete the drilling of one hole then go to the next hole position go to the depth come back and go so that's how now the sequence in which the holes are to be machined will have to be decided by the programmer so it will exactly follow the way that you do because it will never do any optimization beyond the programming okay so programming is not really complicated as long as you follow the rules and you will have to understand the rules as specified now let's go to a little more complicated because in the first case we only had all the eight holes of the same size now here we have three holes that are present and also here we have an external contour this external contour that we have is relatively simple it's not too complicated so let us go through the writing of this program now whenever you have this external contour or an internal contour for that matter what has to be done is when you decide what is the tool that you are going to use let us say we have uh, decided to use a 10 mm diameter cutter then in order to generate that profile the tool will have to remain tangential to the final profile so the actual program that we are creating is the center point of the tool as it traverses past the job so if we let us say in the uh, we have chosen as the corner point lower left hand corner as our uh, coordinate uh, datum that is x0 y0 is located here and then what i am going to do is offset the contour that is to be made by a distance equal to the radius of the cutter because as i said the tool will have to remain tangential to the profile that you want to finally make so the tool will have to remain at a distance equivalent to the radius so the center point of this tool from this will be at a distance equal to the radius for example if you are using any cad program you can uh, draw the path in full scale and then offset this path by means of a distance equivalent to the radius of the cutter and then in order to generate this profile what i am going to do is i will have to break this contour into individual elements for example linear elements or circular elements because we know we can use g01 for linear g02 or g03 for the circular segment so all i have to see here is where are the linear segments where are the circular segments that's what i will have to see for example here when i want to see now from point 1 to 2 is a linear segment from point 2 that is when it changes from the line to the circular arc that is the circular segment that is going from point 2 to point 3 and then from 3 to 4 is a linear segment then 4 to 5 is a circular segment and 5 to 6 is a linear segment 6 to 7 is a linear segment and 7 to 8 is a circular segment and 8 to 9 linear 9 to 10 linear and 10 to 1 is going to be circular segment the way to machine this is bring the tool to the point 1 above the workpiece surface and then i am going to take it to the depth that is required then move from 1 to 2 2 to 3 3 to 4 4 to 5 5 to 6 6 to 7 7 to 8 8 to 9 9 to 10 10 to 11 so that completes the entire profile and at 1 lift the tool and go back to the start point from where you have started that is going to be the machining procedure that you are going to follow so in order to do that what i need is what is the coordinate of 1 what is the coordinate of 2 what is the coordinate of 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so i need to find out these coordinates now these coordinates are actually what is in the cnc terminology are called as cl data central line data that is what we will have to create now this is uh, based on simple geometry because from the part drawing we know all these co values that's why as i said if you can draw this in uh, a cad program such as autocad or solidworks 
you can simply offset and measure the values directly otherwise we can add uh, because since the diameter is known we can simply create those data now here is the cl data that is shown here for point number 1 i'll create x and y coordinates by measurement x 2 3 4 and wherever there is an arc segment find out what is the type of arc whether it is g 0 2 or g 0 3 and also specify what is the radius of the arc going to be now notice here this is the actual radius but the radius of the arc that is to be taken will be the central line of the circle so that's what is more important for you to notice so in this case so the radius here is given as uh, 15 that includes the radius so 10 is the radius of the arc and 5 is the radius of the tool so that is what is taken here so we have the x and y r and r type whether it is g02 or g03 because you can see here this is uh, going like this so this is uh, counter clockwise whereas this 2 to 3 is clockwise 4 to 5 is clockwise 7 to 8 is counter clockwise and again 10 to 1 is clockwise and here this is g03 and this is g02 and so once we create the cl data next step is uh, converting the cl data into the path program again the procedure that we are going to use for using this information is straight forward we will start with all the start blocks this is if you notice they are almost identical to what we have done in the previous part program then we first bring the tool to the point 1 a little above so it is point 1 coordinates that we have and since we are not cutting we say g00 x minus 5 y10 and g2 that is the clearance plane and then we use g1 so that the tool will be going into the material go to the depth that is required and then specify whatever feed rate that you want here of course uh, it is going from z2 to minus 20 so that is the total thickness in real life probably minus 18 mm cannot be cut in one go you might have done it in two or three cuts but for the simplicity of uh, writing the program i am showing it here only as a single cut then from there simply move to point 2 because now it is g1 is already there so i am not going to repeat that and we are going to g1 once y 77.5 then g2 fact all the data is available in the cl data table that we have prepared so move to point 3 move to point 4 move to point 5 6 7 8 9 10 eleven so that means one so we have come back to the point where we started so that completes and then since the machining is completed we lift the tool so that it will be coming into the air will not be in touch with the material and from there we go to the start point and end of the program so these are the last blocks that we are going to always write okay so as you would have noticed whenever we require g01 g02 that is continuous path programming first step that you should do is create the path program with the cl data first because cl data is the most important point once cl data is done the rest is more like a translation so you have the cl data convert that using the format codes and the codes are most of the codes that you are going to use are relatively simple codes like g0 g01 or g02 okay one more point maybe i can mention that here is sometimes i will say g0 0 or sometimes i will simply say g0 now the leading zeros either you can specify like here g00 or you can suppress them simply say g0 it is one and the same so you can say g2 or g02 it's one and the same so you can you don't have to worry about putting this like for example here i could have as well said m2 instead of m02 again if i simulate that program that will show this is i started with a, a rectangular block and then when i machine 
this is of course will be falling through because it is cut through same thing again showing in the linear form so you can notice the lines tool is coming up to this going to the depth and then lift and go back to the start point where it has done now what i am going to go is go a little more a difficult program where because it's so far the first example where we have seen the only point to point application second program we have seen the contouring application but contouring application the contour is relatively simple does not really require complex uh, coordinate calculation what we are going to do is in this case it's going to be slightly complex where we will have to think of how to achieve the required coordinates see what we have here in the example 3 is we have a rectangular block but here the we have to machine this slab this profile which is consisting of an inclined line arc and it's a negative arc that is present here and then this one in fact producing this two and this two will be okay because as long as the line segment is tangential to the arc segment uh, calculation of the coordinates is relatively easy but whenever line segment is intersecting the circular segment the calculations become a little more complicated same thing happen a line is interacting with an inclined line again calculating the coordinate point where the tool has to move is slightly complicated let us see what the mathematics involved in the calculations in fact this is the way the tool is going to work now here you will have a set point okay and you will bring to the point 1 here go to the depth then go here now here you notice the tool will have to move to a point such that this point is tangential to this so you will go like this go to this point then take the circular arc then go to another extra point so these are the extra points that we will have to calculate and how to calculate is what i will show you a little later and also here this point this point is not the same as this point so if you think this is the inclined line as i said if you remember i'm going to offset this line by an amount equal to the radius of the cutter and this line by a radius of the cutter and this line by an amount equal to the radius of the cutter now where this line and this line intersects is actually a point now if i drop a perpendicular from this point to the tool path okay this is the tool path okay this is the perpendicular line similarly if i drop a line perpendicular to the tool path from this point for this this is inclined now this angle that is present here is same as this angle okay for example in this case this angle is 45 degrees therefore this angle is 45 degrees but notice the point where this line is intersecting now this will be a biangular bisector this line is an angular bisector for this angle so since this angle is 45 degrees the angle here is going to be 22.5 that is 45 degrees by 2 and in that case since this is a pythagoras triangle that is a right angle triangle so we can apply the pythagorean theorem so that we can calculate for example or say this is alpha then tan of alpha is equivalent to this that is dy divided by this angle because tangent is equivalent to opposite side divided by the adjacent side okay with the opposite side is dy and adjacent side is radius therefore dy by r is equivalent to tan of 45 by 2 or dy is equivalent to r times tan alpha by 2 that's what that's how we are going to calculate in this case this is dy and in this case it becomes x because this is along the x axis this is along the y axis okay that's the only thing that is involved when you have an inclined line now if you think that calculating using this trigonometric formulas is difficult what you can do is you can draw this full scale in a cad program such as autocad and then offset this 
line by an amount equal to the radius of the cutter that you are using. So then you will get this line and similarly you get this line and the, this line. Then you can use the function for the getting the dimension that is ordinate function in AutoCAD so that you will be able to get the x coordinate value and y coordinate value of this and similarly you can get the x coordinate value and y coordinate value of this. Whenever you want to use a CAD program, one of the most important point to remember is when you draw this line, you, we know that this is our origin that we have selected is here. So you have to make sure you use the same origin when you are drawing. Okay, That's the only uh, precaution that is to be done whenever you want to make use of the CAD program. Otherwise, even the trigonometric formula that is to be used is not too complicated. So all we will have to do is dy is equivalent to r tan 45 by 2. That is what we are going to use. So now let us create the CL data. So the starting point, because this is that which was calculated using the trigonometric formula, this straightforward, then we have a circular interpolation and again this is the last point again this is because of the that uh, inclined line that you have so you calculate those two formulas then once we have that writing the program becomes straightforward so all these initial blocks are there always and then we are going to have first thing position above the two millimeters above the first point then go to the depth whatever that is required and then move to 0.2 then move to 0 0.3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and then come to 11 by the time you reach the point 11 you have completed the entire contour and once the contour is completed what I am going to bring you bring the tool to the top of the workpiece and go to the start point and end of the program. So these are the steps that will, will always be present in the end of your program most of the time. Okay, Rapid back to the clearance plane, go to the start point and end the program. That's what is always required. So always remember the start blocks, end blocks are going to be more or less the same practically for all the program. So whenever you have the contouring programming to be done. What is important is to make sure that I you give calculate the central line data. When you are calculating the central line data, offset the contour that is required by an amount equivalent to the radius of the cutter. And calculate the coordinates. Either use manual calculation procedure or use the CAD approach that I just described. And if you are using a manual approach, Sometimes you may have to apply some trigonometric calculations in order to get the points. And always make sure that the tool, when it is moving, you have to break the contour into smallest segment that is possible. Either it could be a completely linear or completely arc segment. If anything other than linear and arc comes, things become more complicated. Probably we will not be doing the manual path programming approach in that case. There we will actually go to computer aided path programming methods which we will discuss later. Now if I simulate that program, this is what the simulation will look like. So if I have done my job correctly, probably simulation should come off ok. Simulation and then this is the uh, linear plot. So you can notice all, all full lines because where all the machining is taking place and the dotted lines that indicates the rapid motion. So I will have to verify the program. Now so far in the three examples that we talked about, we are using only one tool for the purpose of machining. So since only one tool is used, there is not much of a problem. However, when the program uses multiple tools, then I will have to take care because the point that you are programming is actually the tip of the tool that is the center point, center downmost point of the tool that is what we are actually programming. So 
So what we need to see is that if I have multiple tools, it's impossible to have all the tools of exactly the same length, right? So that means the Z coordinate that you are going to program for each of the tool will have to take care of those differences. Now either you can manually do that, which is going to be too much of calculations involved. Alternatively, we can ask the controller to take care of that. For example, as seen here, what we notice is we have three tools, tool number one, tool number two, and tool number three. Now, tool one has certain length. Tool two is shorter than tool number one by a distance equal to L2. Tool number three is smaller than the tool number one by a distance equal to L3. Now, this is what is termed as a tool length offset. Okay. So, if you enter the value, so what you do is you set your machine with the longest tool. You set your machine with the longest tool and then specify the point. And then what I am going to put is I will put this uh, offset value for the tool number 2 and tool number 3. So, then what I am going to do is program the job as if it is doing with the longest tool all the operations. But when the tool number 2 is calling, it automatically adds or subtracts this value that is L2 that is stored inside. So, that is the reason why when I say M06 T02, when the tool number 2 comes, it automatically finds out what is the offset value and accordingly adjust the all the Z axis movements. So, what we do normally in the NC machine practice is we use the tools, all the tools will be set and then they will be measured and offset values when they are measured they will be transferred into the controller. The difference in length will actually be coming from the presetting. If you remember in the previous uh, lectures we have talked about the uh, tool presetting machines. So, that values will have to be obtained from the tool presetting machines. Now, here whenever uh, the tools are called, so what the tool offset register number is the way the programming is going to be done is tool number is specified T01, okay, and then offset register number is specified 01. Now, in this example, I am giving 0101 identical, but I can also have T0102. So, what will happen is when I give an offset register number, tool 1 will be changed and then it will go into this offset register and measure that value. You remember that L2 and L3 that we have shown in the previous slide. Those values will be stored in these registers and those values will be done. So, whenever these tools are called into action by the programmed instruction, the respective compensation values are activated and automatically taken into account. In fact, this makes the life of the programmer much simple whenever he is using multiple tools for a given program. Now, the way that is going to be present in the program is like this, because there are uh, certain times when in machines either you can see make it T01, automatically it will take it as offset register number 1, some machines. In that case, you do not have to specify the offset register number. So, T01 automatically the value offset value for tool 1 will be activated and then you execute some statements. Then when you bring in tool, offset value of 1 will be cancelled and offset value of 2 will be coming to the picture. And that is how we are going to continue with the program. Now, next thing that we would like to look at is hole making operations. Because uh, point to point applications will have a large number of hole making operations like center drilling, pre-drilling, drilling, counter boring, countersinking, reaming and boring and also followed by tapping. Now, these are some of the operations which you will be doing and whenever you have holes, normally you may not have only one hole, but probably multiple holes and then at each of the hole you may have to do multiple operations. Now, which operations will be done and what sequence to be followed depends upon the uh, accuracy that is required and the finish that is required. For example, 
if you remember we said machining art is rough machining rough boring drilling and tapping finishing surfaces finishing boring and finish reaming so in the sequence that is to be followed for example if it is a drilling operation what we are going to have is center drilling operation if it is required then followed that by pre drilling operation and drilling what we mean here is center drilling whenever a hole is specified with a positional tolerance then it will have to start with a center drilling operation and then pre drilling is required when the drilling is going to be done for large size for example you want to drill a 40 mm hole so you cannot straight away drill 40 mm hole so what you do is initially you will drill with a 15 mm hole so you will produce that and then follow that with a 40 mm hole so that's what we that's the reason why you will have center drilling and then pre drilling followed by drilling now similarly if you go to other like for example reaming final operation is reaming when do we use reaming in the case when the hole size is provided with a very close tolerance for example something like h6 or h7 tolerance is specified in that case we have to follow by reaming now reaming will be center drilling followed by pre drilling drilling and sometimes you may require counter sinking so that the reaming tool that is the reamer will enter into the hole easily so you may have a small counter sinking that will be followed by reaming so if i have four holes to be reamed each hole will have to go have five operations so a total of 20 operations are to be done in order to achieve the same requirement then counter boring if you have counter boring that's very similar to reaming scheme that we talked about a little earlier except the uh, counter sinking will be replaced by counter boring boring operation again center drilling pre drilling drilling boring and tapping you require center drilling pre drilling drilling counter sinking tapping counter sinking will be center drilling pre drilling drilling and then counter sinking counter sinking and counter boring is very similar so whenever your part drawing specifies any one of these operations with the associated tolerance and the surface finish requirements what you will have to make sure is that these order is exactly followed now that brings us to a point where we need to have concept of can cycles because if you recall in the very first example that we did we had those uh, eight holes to be drilled and for each of the eight holes we had three blocks to be written so whenever you have to do an operation number of times you have to repeat a number of times then what is required is that the same operation is repeated that means same block is written again and again now instead of writing that again and again what we can do is we can put that into what is called as a can cycle okay for example in the case of drilling operation the tool has to position a little above the hole in rapid position then move the tool to the required depth with the given feed rate and then the tool has to return to the top hole now this specifies the coordinate position this specifies the depth this specifies the clearance plane now if you have let's say 100 holes to be drilled these two operations are exactly the same because you will be going to the same depth and you are coming back to the same so why repeat all that for example let us say we have these four holes to be drilled now without the program so we will position above the hole one drill to the required depth and then retract to the hole and then we repeat the same for the hole two we will repeat the same to the hole three and we'll repeat the same to the four so you notice that here we are for each of the hole we have three blocks and for four holes we have total of 12 blocks and if you see here the same position is being repeated so you see this is the same drill to the required depth this is the same drill to the required depth this is the same drill to the required depth. exactly identical okay and then again if you talk about the retract to that is the same so what we see is these are three blocks that are required 
for one whole. Now instead of repeating the same statements, why not combine all of them into a single block? What we would like to do is, if I can combine all these three into one block, which is the same actions are being repeated for each of the holes, as we have seen earlier, for each of the three NC blocks that we are writing for one hole drilling, what we notice is two of them are repeated without practically any change. Okay? So, it therefore will be possible to define a CAN cycle or a fixed cycle which can repeat all these motions without having to repeat the same information for each of the holes. That is the concept of CAN cycle. The most common CAN cycle that are normally used are for the hole making operations such as drilling, reaming, tapping because of the obvious advantages. So, if I have a CAN cycle, what it is going to do is from the current position, wherever it is, it will go rapid to a point which is slightly above the hole to be drilled. Okay? That is what we call as the clearance plane. Then from that point, it will feed to the depth, it will feed to the depth, whatever that you are specifying. And then, after the operation is completed, the tool will move rapid back to the clearance plane. So, rapid to the position, feed to the depth, rapid back to the clearance plane. Those are the three motions that are embedded into one CAN cycle. So, what we are going to do is, if I now have the same program that as I have given earlier, if I have take that and then write it with CAN cycle. See, this is the program without CAN cycle that we have seen earlier, which is having total of 12 blocks. And with the CAN cycle, all I have is 5 blocks. Now, this is the first block which defines the CAN cycle and drills at the first hole. And for all the subsequent holes, simply I specify the same because the all these operations will be repeated at each one of them. Now, you can notice how simple the program looks like and also it is very easy for reading and writing. So, CAN cycles are a very important element that are to be used by any programmer. Now, the general syntax that we are going to use in a CAN cycle is you specify the CAN cycle number that is the first code and then follow that with x, y, z so, x, y are the coordinates, g81 specifies it is a drill cycle, okay. x and y specify the coordinates of the point where the hole is to be drilled. Now, z specifies the total depth up to which the tool will have to go for the purpose of drilling. Then, r is the coordinate value that is used, which is a clearance plane where this tool should be positioned in rapid before drilling. I mean, R actually is a Z coordinate that is being specified, except the fact that R is uh, the rapid plane. So, where the tool has to be positioned before it actually goes to the depth. That is what we are going to have. So, now if I compare the CAN cycle programming, this is what looks like. This is without CAN cycle and this is with CAN cycle. So, you can see it is easy to write, it is easy to punch in and also it is easy to understand. Once you know what is this G8180 means. G8180 is start a CAN cycle, G8 is cancel the CAN cycle. That is what it is. Now, what ISO has done is they have standardized the coordinate, the number of cycles, CAN cycles this is what we call as the G80 series. So, what we have here is uh, G80 to G89, all these 10 are defined. G80 is cancelling the cycle, G81 is used for drilling, G82 is used for uh, counter boring and counter sinking, 83 is used for this 84, 85, 86. What I am going to do is, I will uh, stop this lecture at this point, but we will continue with this and see an example uh, in the next cycle where we will be able to use these CAN cycles uh, for writing more complex programs. Okay, thank you.